Hi, welcome to this video about using Faust inside Touch Designer. The Faust chop is a custom C++ plugin. Here it is uh, being loaded as a C++ chop. Here it is as a custom operator, and it has two inputs. The first input is audio rate samples, and it can be any number of channels. And then the second uh, input is a list of audio controls. And these audio controls, you might be modifying them at uh, one time per video frame, or they could actually be audio rate, and then you could change the block size of the audio. So typically, this audio is, we're doing 60 frames per second, and it's 44.1 kilohertz audio. And so the, the, the block size, it's, it's doing about 735 samples per frame. So if we were to do a block size of 512, then it would be processing uh, two it would be processing these control parameters twice per frame, basically. So that means that we could actually turn this Faust control into uh, a higher frame rate uh, to kind of resample it. Uh, if, if you had some kind of audio source that was faster than 500, um, uh, that was uh, faster than 60 frames per second, but this is just a single frame. Um, so to get to the details of what the Faust Chop actually does, uh, let's start with the reverb example. So here's the code for uh, Reverb, and you can go to the Faust Online IDE and look at uh, the Reverb example, go to Examples, go to Reverb, and then uh, Freeverb. Freeverb is uh, a kind of old Reverb plugin that has been you know, widely used uh, because the, uh, the coder of it generously made it op open source and uh, freely usable. Um, so that's why it appears in a number of audio frameworks, including Faust. So if you wanted to actually look at the source of that, then you'd go to uh, this website, Faust Libraries, and you could browse here and you have more description of them. So it says free verb demo, and you can actually look at the source of the free verb by going to the GitHub page of Faust Libraries. So this is that page, um, and you can see all of the Faust code. So it looks pretty simple. It just says DM for demo, free verb demo, but it's actually loading uh, behind the scenes more code. So uh, this goes into null Faust code, and that is a custom parameter on the Faust shop. So it says code, and we say null Faust code. Um, we also say the sample rate, the block size, and polyphony, uh, the number of voices of poly polyphony, and MIDI. Um, I'll talk about MIDI control later. But this uh, demo of reverb is not uh, a MIDI controlled thing and uh, it doesn't involve using MIDI hardware like I have down here. It's actually going to use uh, native touch designer elements. So for example, um, if we go to the, the Faust IDE again, and if we load um, this uh, reverb example and you just hit play, then you're going to be shown this UI. And that's because the source code of the, uh, free, of the Freeverb plugin makes calls to show things like slider, excuse me, um, slider uh, and buttons and all these native UI elements. And so these are these are kind of native Faust elements. But what happens is that when you compile um, uh, when you compile this code inside Touch Designer, it actually, uh, you can hit the setup UI button and that's going to save an XML file to the computer. And when it does that, then that XML file is going to appear here. And this XML file actually has all of the information about what the UI was based on the Faust code that you wrote. So it says what the layout is, it says what the widgets are, um, and then whenever this XML changes because you hit uh, the setup UI button, and if, if, if the XML changes, then it uh, causes this script, script build UI, to run. So what script build UI does is it goes through that XML file and parses it, and then it takes uh, these uh, kind of uh, buttons, button, checkbox, knob, and it makes a uh, touch designer UI over here in the uh, UI container based on uh, the code that you wrote. So this thing is kind of, let's go to the uh, polyph uh, the uh, reverb one again. This one, see it, it has three knobs and it has a slider for the wet dry of the reverb. So when we compile the reverb plugin, uh, we're actually going to get uh, a UI in touch designer that, that mirrors the Faust IDE a little bit. And also the it's it's building the UI here, but this UI has this UI container has bindings to base pars. So you see that it has these things, uh, frequency gain, gate, and pan. But these are for an old um, code. So now let's uh, actually demonstrate it. Let's hit compile. Uh, and again, MIDI is off because this is not a MIDI thing. So I hit compile. And now we're hearing the reverb. Um, and I'll hit setup UI. And again, this 
changed. I'm actually going to reduce, reduce the volume a bit, uh, probably actually to zero. We don't need to listen to it right now. So the XML changed, um, uh, the script of the build UI happened. And so now uh, the UI container, container was populated. And so now if I go to base pars, you see that it has uh, these parameters and these parameters are also over here. And if I were to change the, uh, the wet parameter, then it's changing the base pars. And if I were to change these knobs over here, it's also changing uh, the, the pars on it. And uh, now I'll demonstrate the audio again. So I'm gonna turn on the audio a little bit. Um, so just like the most obvious parameter is the, the wet dry. So here, this is a uh, dry signal and that's wet signal. And the, the knobs work too. To, to modify the audio. Um, so that is all for the reverb example, and I'll hit reset on it, so that just clears everything. Uh, and now I'll go to the pitch shifter example, because that's a little cool. Uh, so I'll hit compile, uh, then I'll hit um, set up UI again. And so now compare this UI, which is uh, you know the standard Faust Online IDE. It has shift and it has window samples and crossfade. Uh, and now, now we have uh, this UI over here. It says shift in semitones, window, and crossfade. And so now let's listen to this a little bit. Pretty cool. So I'll hit reset on that. We'll go to one more UI example, and this is just a, a total kitchen sink of the UI elements that I, I coded this example myself. Uh, it's not meant to sound good or interesting, so I'll hit compile on it. And uh, now I'll hit set up UI. And now we have a lot of options. So we have uh, a vertical slider, um, and we have a knob, and we have a checkbox, and we have a menu, uh, and we have a gate. So actually, if I were to increase the gain of this one a little bit and the frequency, now I can hit this gate a little bit. Um, let's let's change the audio again. Sorry, it's too loud. So um, actually, I'm going to turn off this checkbox, and now I have this instrument. So I'm just I'm just pulsing the gate a little bit to play an instrument, and this is a checkbox. Uh, the frequency is a little annoying. I'm going to lower it. We've got a slider, gain, checkbox, and this is this checkbox uh, needs to be improved a little bit um, because. Uh, over here, if I were to go to the checkbox, um, you see that it's actually this gate parameter. And Touch Designer, it's doing, uh, it, it uses menus as just in integers, but in Faust, there's a concept of minimum and maximum and step size, and so that doesn't exactly translate into uh, the UI right now. So if you were going to make your own UI, um, then you would you would do some math, uh, but it's, it would be pretty basic, and uh, it's just not scripted yet into the system. So now let's go to um, let's go to the polyphony example. Uh, so I'm going to collect uh, uh, connect polyphony into there. And so this is a, a really basic instrument of of uh, of oscillators being used in with polyphony, just sine waves. And so they'll show up really clear, clearly in the lower right in the FFT window. Um, so uh, I'm going to hit the change the number of voices to something higher like eight. Uh, turn polyphony on and turn MIDI on. And notice in this code that um, I've said uh, end voices. I'm going to increase that to eight. Uh, and so they should they should be consistent between the end voices that you put here and then the end voices that you put on the chop. And then next, uh, I've said that MIDI control is 41. And so the I have some MIDI hardware that I'm pointing to here in the lower right. Uh, and so this knob is actually, according to Touch Designer, it's 42. So actually, if I were to go to the MIDI device mapper, and if I were to turn on my launch control, and if I were to move this, it's actually showing up as index 42. But there's a slight inconsistency with the Faust IDE. I don't know which one's wrong. <laughs> but uh, so it's actually 41 in, in the Faust IDE. So, um, so here I've said 41, and that's controlling the panning. So now if I, uh, I'm ready to run this code, and also it's, it's polyphonic, so uh, the, the note is um, the frequency, and that frequency, uh, because uh, I, I've set a polyphony, then it, it just works automatically with this MIDI controller. And so you can read more of the Faust uh, documentation to understand why that works. Um, 
So I'm going to hit compile. And here I've got my instrument. And so now I'm going to play some notes. So this is kind of, um, it's maybe not very loud. Um, so this is a note and it's, it's kind of, uh, now it's centered because I wiggled the knob a little bit and now I can make it to the left channel because I'm rotating this knob and now I can rotate it to the right. Uh, and now it's kind of right leaning and I'll, now I'll demonstrate polyphony. So look at the FFT window. So I'm playing, I'm playing four notes on my, on my MIDI controller and that's because I have the polyphony set, set to higher than four. Um, or four or higher. Um, and so that is uh, demonstrating the um, pol polyphony example. Uh, I'm going to just reset it and talk a little bit more about kind of the design of things. So when you hit compile, um, I'm actually going to go back to my many UI example, uh, turn off MIDI, uh, hit compile, hit, hit up setup UI. When you hit setup UI, it's actually, um, I mentioned that it's saving an XML file, but it's also uh, kind of dumping parameters into the uh, touch designer console. And so now if I were to scroll, this is all the C++ code that is actually kind of running. Uh, this is kind of getting compiled and running in, in a virtual machine or uh, it, it's uh, a little more complicated than that. But uh, if I were to scroll to the top of this, then, uh, it says what the parameter names are. And so you can just uh, uh, find say, uh, the consistency between them. So if it says that the uh, parameter should be named oscillator sawtooth frequency, we'll just make sure that it matches here, oscillator sawtooth frequency. And uh, for instance, menu gain and all the other parameters. And so if there's an inconsistency here, then it's not going to work correctly. And so um, my hope is um, like, the, you know this this thing about script building UI. I don't. I'm not sure how important it is. I think that uh, what might interest touch designer users is to just use this as is, but then to you know leave these all the, <coughs> leave these parameters also as is, but just put effort into making your own touch designer UI. And if you were to change the code, um, then it should remain consistent. You, you know, if you write your your Faust code a certain way they're always going to be titled uh, this thing. Uh, and that's just because of the Faust code. It, it has nothing to do with Touch Designer. So you're responsible, you could be responsible for making the UI as you want, as long as you keep the naming convention correct. Um, it's also pointing out the number of inputs. So I'm using this, this is the that basic uh, kitchen sink synthesizer example. And so it actually has uh, no outputs and it has, uh, or it has no, inputs because it's purely generative it's not processing audio and then it's a uh, mono audio out so it's it's actually not stereo um and yeah so i hope that um if you are new to faust that you uh, uh try it out look at the faust ide look at the other uh, recommendations for for learning learning resources that i've shared and i hope that you uh, uh try out combining faust with the touch designer um the GitHub uh, is uh, td-faust on my GitHub page, and there is a discussion uh, page. So you can uh, ask questions about you know, why your Faust code isn't working. I hope that what you do is you, uh, you try the Faust IDE and you do a lot of your you know, Faust debugging inside here. And if it works in the Faust IDE, but for some reason it's not working inside Touch Designer, then that's most relevant to um, what I want to help out with and, and make sure that you get those uh, issues fixed. Because I, I do want this to be a pretty flexible um, interface for, for using Faust inside Touch Designer. Thanks for trying it out. Bye.